morning. <laughs> it's, uh, look at my watch. <laughs> it's like 6.50 in the morning. This is a video that really wasn't supposed to be a video. <laughs> my son's always looking, he's in college and he's always looking for some extra money. So last week he came out and sprayed the whole back of the fence. He helped me do the front. And then uh, I said, yeah, come on over. I wanna do some work on the green because it's a lot of shoveling and wheelbarrow work. I figured I'd cover a couple things real quick before I put this up. It's just a lot of footage of us actually doing this project and I'll walk you through what we're doing step by step. First of all, there are several videos about the putting green we put in uh, from the construction of it to the seating of it to all kinds of stuff. So on our channel, if you go to our channel, you can find more videos about this if you wanna know more. A couple of people have asked about um, the Humichar shirts that we wear. I wanted a, I just wanted some cheap shirts. Uh, I don't want to wear my nice fishing shirts all the time. <laughs> so uh, I ordered like cheap $12 shirts and put Humichar logos, but people like them and they are pretty cool. So what I did is I went to Teespring and I uploaded uh, some logos there that you can actually order shirts. And it's actually double printed. It's a front pocket logo and then a back full logo. And there's short sleeve, long sleeve, and sweatshirts. And you have to understand how Teespring works. I can go there and I can set a profit margin. Well, we set the profit margin to zero, maybe six cents or something. So when you go there, you can order cheap stuff. Uh, the t-shirts, double side printed are like 12 bucks. The long sleeve shirts are like 17 and the hoodies are like 24 bucks. And that's dirt cheap. It's good yard work clothing. <laughs> um, always order a size larger, by the way, because their stuff always shrinks. So order a size larger. But people will ask about that. Next, I put up, a, I spent almost three days making a real educational video about humichar and biochar. That video is up. When you have time, it's like kind of like a learning class. A lot of it is learning. Watch that video. It's really, it's a good video to help clear it up. Also, um, the Bermuda Lawn Guide, we're going to be talking about seeding today. A lot of people have questions about common Bermuda seed versus nice versus hybrid seed versus pre-emergent. And Bermuda Lawn Guide walks you through all that. You don't have to ask, you don't have to ask questions. Just go to the Bermuda Long Guide and everything is on there, walks you through year by year. Get that. Of course, uh, click subscribe. I got a list here. Click subscribe real quick because we got a ton of videos coming out and like I got a real more. We're going to do a full real more video um, explaining why I like certain real mowers over another one because I don't, I don't get anything free. I buy all my equipment. <laughs> I buy all my stuff. I can buy anything I want. So I'll explain something about the real mowers we use too. Hey guys, so obviously it's later, <laughs> but I want to come out here first and show you the finished product of this green and explain what we did real quick. First of all, this is a naturally hilly. This is a natural hill or knoll that we have back here, which worked out well. And we really didn't put any different seed down here. It's regular hybrid type Bermuda sod. The problem being is that when you construct greens, and my background is golf, and you can look at all the, the videos, USGA actually has a bunch of videos about constructing a green online, you have to use a dwarf grass. So the problem is dwarf Bermuda is not available on a seed, you have to sprig it, and I wasn't going to go through that this year. So we were just leaving it normal. We use this a lot. We chip, my son comes over and we spend hours out back here chipping to it. We got a nice long 40 yard shot here. We do putt on it, but we wanted to sort of step it up a little bit. I don't really care about the finished product of this for this year because we'll probably end up killing it off and sprigging it with Bermuda next year. So what I did was I ordered two smaller grasses. Uh, one is a creeping bent and one is a creeping bluegrass. We're going to put both seeds on here and let them compete, see which wins. Now the good thing about this area is I got smart and when I had my uh, in irrigation installed this year back here on the back half of our lawn I put five heads around this green. So I can push a button and run this so I can water it every four hours if I want to. So 
I've got plenty of irrigation. It's not a problem back here. Like I said, this is just for fun. This is just, we just decided to step it up and say, let's experiment and have some fun with it. What we did, number one, we came out here and cut it real short. Number two, we put down both types of seeds right after that. Number three, we came out here with a leveling mix, which is a mix of sand and organic matter. And that's what golf greens are actually made of. They call it a rooting mix, which is like a 70-30 mix of sand and organic matter. You do not build greens with plain sand, by the way. Yes, you do some leveling with plain sand, but you, greens are not built with plain sand. Another round of seed and another round of leveling mix. And it took quite a bit of work. Uh, by the way, when we built this green, uh, a lot of people ask about human char when you're putting down new sod and new seed. Yes, we put 10 times the recommended amount of human char on this green that you're supposed to. We basically turn this green black. If you're putting down new sod and you're going to till it up, put down a ton of human char, spray it with a little super juice and then till it in. Same thing if you're going to put down new seed, put out a ton of human char, spray it with super juice, let it sit for a while and then till it up and do your regular seed. Remember, human char has no nutrients in it. It's a biochar and humic acid mix. I, I, all the time I throw it in my mouth just to show that you can eat it. It is 100% organic approved for gardens. Heading back to what used to be home Passing by those little towns I know so well Stopping for gas and then I'm behind the wheel again Driving this like a spiritual cleanse Where every mile is a new beginning And every bend holds a new end Eyes on the road, don't lose control I'm speeding fast to chase my soul I'm driving to get away Running through emotions high and low Holding on a leg For the sky, I had it all but lost and fell back down again. Spent my time playing the game where every single day was a losing battle and every drink was a dead end. Eyes on the goal, don't lose control. I'm living fast, I've lost my soul. I'm driving to get away. Emotions high and low Holding on or letting go I'm fighting Another day That's pretty much done. We're, uh, normally I'd put sand out with a spreader, 
but because the past two weeks have been rain, 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 <laughs> these sandbags are just damp and it won't come out of the spreader evenly enough, so we just threw it by hand. But basically that's what it looks like. Uh, and then I'm gonna come out. I have one, two, three, four, five, five or six sprinkler heads devoted to this area because we knew I was gonna put a green in. So that's why I have so many sprinkler heads. So the nice thing is, is I can have the sprinkler heads run every four hours during a hot day. That's pretty sweet. That's a sweet setup. And, you know, fast germination. I should see germination starting in five or six days. We'll find out. So I'm just gonna wet it down with the spray, it down with the hose lightly and just leave it. We do have chance of thunderstorms over the next couple days. That's one issue, but knock on wood, you know, we won't have any severe damage on it. Well, that's done. Not too shabby. Tomorrow, Jessica's coming over. She's gonna vacuum the pool. Maybe I'll put that on video. We got to do a ton of reel cutting. And a bunch of people have had questions, a lot of questions about reel mowers and um, different brands and so forth. So I figured I'd do a, a, not a reel mower brand comparison, but just my mindset on reel mowers and why I like the, I don't like the real expensive reel mowers. I like the more moderate priced ones. They're easy to work on. They're pretty simple. They're not that expensive. So anyways, I'll do a reel mower video. I gotta go in, I got an electrician coming. Talk to you later, die.